All right, let's talk Notre Dame, Fighting Irish. Look, obviously, the 2024 cycle is behind us. A lot of new Notre Dame players coming into the fold for spring ball and, of course, fall camp and then, of course, the regular season. A lot of energy there. But like all good, smart programs, Notre Dame has already turned its eye towards the future, which you have to do in the recruiting game. It's a never-ending cycle, 365 days a year. And that's exactly what the Fighting Irish and Coach Freeman have done. They have secured another big-time commitment, this time for the 20. 25 class let's pull up the report and we'll talk about it more on the other side this is according to irish breakdown all right notre dame remains red hot on the recruiting trail and this time the irish have landed greenwich brunwitz uh, brunswick offensive tackle maddie augustine the six foot seven 290 pound tackle has been a top target for the irish for some time notre dame beat out finalist ohio state michigan penn state and wisconsin to land the talented blocker Augustine was a relative unknown this past summer when he arrived at Notre Dame for an on-campus lineman camp. He didn't leave the camp as an unknown as the Irish coaches offered him at the camp. That offer was due to how well Augustine performed in front of the Notre Dame staff, and he became a top target by the staff that weekend. And Notre Dame did not let up the recruiting efforts. They secured the commitment from Augustine. Great move by the Fighting Irish. Myas, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this going forward. But first, Notre Dame fans, in the comment section below, we're talking about the future, but let's take one more step and look back at the 2024 recruiting class. And in the comment section below, give us your favorite incoming freshman that Notre Dame added to the fold in the 2024 class, the guy you really think will be the next great Fighting Irish superstar. Let us know which one you really like and put them in the comment section below. But Myas, what do you think of this move by Notre Dame and what it means for them looking forward? Well, Nate, I think it's very interesting how heavily Notre Dame is attacking the state of Connecticut. This is their third get from the state of Connecticut, getting both the number one and number two player in the state of Connecticut, number one being Owen Strebig, the other offensive tackle, huge guy as well, 6'8", 295. And then we now have Matty Augustine, the number two player in the state of Connecticut, 6'7", 290 pound offensive tackle they're building an actual great wall of china on the field for notre dame it's going to be an impenetrable force one day but i like what they're doing they're really targeting a lot of smaller states early on it's like the article said this guy was relatively unknown before he came to a notre dame camp then they saw him heavily recruited him after they saw what he was capable of boom now you have the number one and number two players in the state of connecticut at committed to your football team. I think this is great work by Coach Marcus Freeman and his staff really going out there, looking around, and finding that hidden talent, trying to go ahead and early on. Notre Dame, it's a powerhouse name. Everybody knows Notre Dame. Everyone knows those gold helmets. Everyone knows the Hail Mary. Everyone knows just the history of a school like Notre Dame. I just think that they have that recruiting power in their history and their dynasty, and just, you know, the prestige of a school like that. So they can get big recruits. That's never really been their problem. They go around doing that now. They're searching out all across the country to find those hidden gems early on. I think it's a really smart strategy. Another place they hit is Wisconsin as well. They got number two player in the state of Wisconsin, another big-time offensive lineman for the Fighting Irish. I think this strategy really early on by Notre Dame has been very, very good. Very interesting one as well, and I think it's going to pay dividends for them going forward. Yeah, Miles, I couldn't agree more. One quick correction for our, for our listeners there. Will Black was the other tackle from Connecticut. Strebig was the guy from Wisconsin. May have gotten those backwards there a little bit, but irregardless, it is clear that Notre Dame has a certain type at offensive line, and they know what they're doing, right? Notre Dame has chugged out elite-level offensive linemen going back a number of years now, and they're recruiting the kind of guys that are, like, they feel like Big Ten linemen, but more athletic. When I look at Matty Augustine, when I look at Will Black, the other kid from Connecticut, I say kid, this dude, both these guys are monsters, six, seven, 300 pounds. When I look at them and watch their film, they don't play like lumbering six, eight guys, right? A lot of times when you think of six, seven, six, eight guys at 16, 17 years old, you're thinking uncoordinated. They don't know how to use their feet and hands. They're just big and strong. Maybe you can teach them to play football. You look at their film and specifically Augustine's, you're like, this guy can move. They pulled him as a pulling tackle a lot in high school, and he was a beast doing that. He's a great athlete. Now, look, the level of competition is going to be different, obviously, from Connecticut to Notre Dame. It's going to be a huge gap. There will be a learning curve. But the good news is Augustine and a lot of these other young offensive linemen 
already have their physical tools are nasty too. They, they're all about pancakes and pile driving people. Their highlight films are just full of them demolishing other poor high school kids. They're just trying to enjoy their Friday night lights and they run into bulldogs like Augustine, absolutely obliterating them. I mean, it is as a former offensive lineman, they're off their highlight films fun to watch, but I would not want to be on the other side of these kids. But I tell you what, what Notre Dame has done here in terms of targeting Connecticut, I think it's a really smart strategy. It's one of those things where if everyone's zigging and you zag, it tends to work out pretty well for you. If everyone's looking at, say, state of Ohio and no one's looking at Connecticut, well, instead of competing with everybody at the state of Ohio for the top 50 guys and the competition is a lot easier to get the top five guys in Connecticut – well, just go get the top five guys in Connecticut. And that's exactly what Notre Dame is doing here, essentially. And I think it's a great recruiting strategy. Usually we see a lot of these schools duke it out every year. Who's going to get the big guy from Ohio, from Florida, from Texas, and California? And Notre Dame has won and will continue to win some of those battles. But you don't want every single one of your recruiting battles to be that way, right? Sometimes you zag when everybody's zigging, go to Connecticut, get the two top players in the state. And then move on. This is just really sound strategy from Notre Dame. And they got themselves a heck of a player in Augustine. Pair him with Stree Biggs, pair him with Will Black, and you're going to have a heck of an offensive line in a future that's all fit. Okay.